Hey everybody, <clears throat> in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to create what is known as a saddle surface in the form of a ring, okay, and this is an example of one right here that I created in 3ds Max. Um, it's a very elegant and beautiful uh, you know, shape. Uh, it could be used for a variety of things like a pendant or earring, all right, and um, there's a couple ways to achieve this. I mean, there are, as I understand, there are uh, some free applications out there that are geared specifically towards creating this uh, this beautiful uh, shape from a saddle tower, um, and then you basically bend it into a ring just like this. Um, but you know, the downfall to doing it automated through uh, that particular program is uh, the fact that you end up with a very dense, you, you know, it's hard to control the mesh quality and uh, you, you're basically stuck with an STL file or an OBJ of a very high resolution object um, where, you know, creating your own from scratch uh, is a little bit more flexible in the sense of, uh, you know, poly count. You'll have a, a you know, a, a low resolution base mesh that you can always, you know, refer to and go back to. And not to mention that uh, you can use a variety of techniques to achieve different styles of the shape itself. Um, and I'll show you what I mean right here. As you can see uh, in this scene, I've got four different saddle surface rings, um, you know, and they're all slightly different. Uh, very beautiful and elegant curves to these objects. All right, and this these would make some very, uh, you know, very elaborate pendants or you know an earring or something like that. All right, so um, you know, getting to these shapes is is really quite simple. Um, it, it's just a matter of uh, a, a few procedural steps and uh, you know some modifiers involved. So we don't need any plugins or any extra third-party software. Uh, we can do it right here in Max or any 3D modeling application, really. All right, so um, I'll show you how to do that. All right, let me just hide these for now. All right, and we'll start with a fresh scene. Okay, and uh, we'll bring up all four of our views here because we'll need them. All right, so uh, we'll start with a regular plane and we'll build it as a square right in the middle here okay and we'll just take it down to a flat surface with no uh, segments all right so we have that we'll convert that to editable poly and then we'll switch to element mode and select that polygon and holding down shift i will just drag down a copy of it as an element. All right, so now we have these two here, and we'll just align them <clears throat> so that they're touching here. Okay, and once we've done that, let's get in closer so we can see a little bit better. We'll just touch those right there. All right, once we've done that, we'll rotate the bottom one that we just created. Um, we'll rotate that 90 degrees. Okay, so now you're left with this. All right, and these are separate objects right now. So we'll go to vertex mode and we'll select this vertex on the top uh, element and we'll select this vertex on the bottom element, okay? And we'll collapse. All right, so that collapses those two. And then we'll select that vertex on the bottom element and this one on the top element, all right? and we'll collapse those. Oh, you know what's happened here. Um, I gotta flip the normals here. It won't collapse until these normals are aligned, so we'll flip that normal. All right, so now it's facing the right way, and we'll try that operation again. All right, so we have those two selected and collapse. All right, and there we go. All right, so that leaves us with this shape. All right. So now what we'll do, next step, is just to uh, get our pivot, and we're going to move our pivot right to this corner right here. All right, so 
that way when we go to the next step in applying symmetry and we'll just flip and we have a symmetrical object here that needs to be welded at this vertex point so we'll just move the mirror in a little bit until that vertex is welded together and we'll collapse all right now we just want to make sure when we do this that this ver these two vertices are a actually just one vertex all right so you can just select them and collapse again to make sure that you've you've done that all right so that's welded all right so now we have this shape and the next step is to uh, we're going to in the top viewport we're going to grab this one and this one and we're going to collapse those two as well Oh, we got the wrong ones actually we want the middle ones so this one and this one all right so those two need to be selected and then collapsed so that you're left with then this shape here okay it's pretty simple so far now in the left viewport what we'll do or you can actually do it in the top viewport is just bring that out so that it lines up straight with those two vertexes all right so you'll basically have a straight uh, a straight edge there coming down all right and then the next step we will uh, go ahead and take our our pivot from the top viewport and bring it right out to the edge here and we'll apply another symmetry modifier okay so then and this time we'll switch it to the z-axis so that we end up with this shape all right and then we'll fix the mirroring on this as well so that they're welded together all right so we've moved the mirror in until they are welded up and you want to be sure that the welding is actually happening here and uh, you know the the best way to do that is just to uh, is just to uh, give it you know a little check after after you've welded it and collapsed it check it with the turbo smooth and make sure it is actually collapsed and it is and you know it's not uh, separating at all okay we don't need our turbo smooth right now that was just to make sure we're welded up all right so now we have this shape all right so the next step is to grab this edge this edge and then these two edges here all right so basically in a uh, cross shape here those edges and we're going to apply a chamfer all right and we're going to chamfer it out pretty pretty good here all right so that we end up with something like that okay and this is our shape so far next step is to apply another symmetry and this time it will be on the y-axis and we want to stack another one on top here make sure you're welded up all right so now we have something like this okay and then we can collapse and we're going to do that one more time but what you could do here is go in and move your pivot point up to the top here all right just so the symmetry comes on where it should all right and then uh, do it again on the Y flip and adjust the mirror so that it's just welding all the points there all right so we want to make sure we're welded there and we don't want to go too far down we just done just enough to weld those points all right and we'll uh, We'll verify that this is all welded up in a minute all right so we do, we can collapse all of that and what we end up with here is a very basic uh, shirk um, minimal surface a saddle tower okay and it's a beautiful shape once we go and subdivide it you'll see this is a an elegant uh, an elegant shape here all right and um, 
what we're going to do, we're going to take this one step further and we're going to add another segment to the top with symmetry. So let's back up because what we're going to do is we're going to turn it into a ring. And you could ring this as well but uh, and have a completely different result. But we're after a specific result here so I'm going to do one more iteration, one more uh, story to this tower. All right, and uh, so I'll get my pivot point and effect pivot only and I will move it up to the top alright so it lines up with the top here and then I will apply another symmetry on the Y flip it and just adjust my mirror slightly let's get in close here and just slightly enough that these points get welded and collapse okay now that should all be welded let me just make sure here that we're all welded up. We'll apply a turbo smooth and we don't see any weirdness happening there. So that appears to be all welded nicely. And now we have a nice tall saddle tower that we're going to uh, turn into a toroidal ring. Alright, so you can leave the turbo smooth on at this point because we can work procedurally in the stack. Um, what we're going to do here is we're going to apply a twist modifier. All right, and we'll twist it three. Actually, let's make sure that our pivot point is centered to object, which it pretty much was anyway. All right, then we'll go down to our twist modifier and apply an angle of 360. And don't get scared if you get a result like this. You just got to change the axis. Alright, so there's a twist axis, axis on a 360 degree twist on the object. Alright, so that's the first step there. And the second procedural step will be to apply a bend modifier. And again, it'll be on the Y, 360 degrees. And there we have our, our circular shape and actually we'll bring it down a little bit so that we can see where we're lined up here and what we need to do and we'll disable show end result temporarily uh, apply an edit poly modifier in edge mode and we'll select this edge this edge this edge and this edge and we'll loop them and then holding down control switch to vertex mode and you have all the vertices that need to be welded selected and then you can go back down with them selected you can go back down here into your bend modifier and change it back to the 360 go back up to edit poly and they're all selected and you shift control weld and uh, you just make sure you have them all welded up here so before and after you can see they're all welded except that okay and then you could just collapse to that edit poly modifier all right and you can see the result all right so here's our here's our saddle ring so far all right and you can see the poly count is very manageable and in fact if you disable the turbo smooth it's very low res right here okay and uh, at this point what we can do is add a shell modifier for some thickness all right and adjust the thickness to your liking and then we'll see the result of that all right and because we're working with such a low resolution base we could add uh, a couple iterations safely here all right you don't want to maybe go that high but uh, there's the result there of two iterations okay so it's a nice smooth looking saddle ring all right and that's the result of, uh, of that process, the first process to achieving this shape. And of course, you can always play with the, uh, with the thickness settings and see uh, the results of changing the thickness a little bit. Okay. All right. So that's, that's that object. All right. So I like that result. I think that gives a I think that's an easy process once you remember, once you recall the steps to achieving it. It's just basically a symmetry upon symmetry upon symmetry. All right. So um just the important thing here is to make sure all your points are welded together so you end up with a solid object. All right. So that's the first one. 
All right, that's the first technique, and I'll show you another technique that gives a very different but still uh, uniquely interesting result. All right, so the second technique will start with again a plane. All right, just draw a plane in the scene, one by one segments. All right, no internal segments to it. And we'll immediately turn it to editable poly. And we'll switch down to edge mode and we'll grab these two edges and we'll shift drag them down to, uh, let's dra drag them down to about 30. All right, just pay attention to how, uh, you know, how far you're dragging them if, you know, you want these to be pretty much even. All right, so we'll drag this down to about 30. All right, we could probably go longer with them, but we'll see how this works out. All right, so now you end up with this shape. And the next step here will be to just apply a uh, mesh smooth modifier, and we'll change it to classic. And the reason for that is because we're interested in getting this saddle form first. All right, so the mesh smooth does a nice job in classic mode of providing that saddle shape. All right, so once we have this, we could collapse all, and then we'll switch to faces, and we'll just uh, turn on our, our sub-object preview selection, and holding down control, just start highlighting and selecting the ones you want to keep, which will be those interior ones, control I, and delete. Okay, so now we have our saddle shape here, and we can go ahead again and select some edges here on the sides. Actually, let me disable the, that uh, selection type. I like this one better for this type of work. All right, and we'll just select these edges here, and we'll move them down again to about 30. And then we'll select these edges here. All right, and we'll move those up on the Z about 30. So that you have something like this. All right, and then we'll, uh, we'll make planar on the Z. All right, in for both of these. So you have this, all right. So now that we have this shape, we can go ahead and start uh, our symmetry process. All right, so we'll look at this from all views and we'll go ahead and affect pivot only, move the pivot up to line up with the top. All right, and then we'll apply a symmetry modifier on the in this case on the Z, we'll flip it and we'll adjust our mirror until they're welded up nicely like that. All right, so that's our first saddle. All right, we can collapse all and we'll make another saddle right above that. So I'll just move the pivot up to here and I'll make this all symmetrical, do a flip, and just make sure my mirror is set properly, right about there. All right, so now we can collapse all this, and we have a, a, nice, uh, a nice tower started in a different type of uh, a variety of saddle tower. All right, so I think we can go one more level of symmetry. All right, so what we'll do here is uh, we'll just go up to the top and affect pivot only, and we'll symmetri make uh, this whole thing in another iteration of symmetry. So we'll put it up here right near the top and go ahead and apply another symmetry on the Z, flip it, and just fix our mirror a little bit so that they're all welded. <coughs> I'll have to excuse me, I'm just getting over a cold here, so my voice is a little raspy. All right, so collapse all. And now we have a tall tower that we could twist and bend. All right, so let's uh, make sure our pivot is centered in the object. 
All right, it's pretty much centered, and we'll go ahead and apply a twist modifier, and we'll do 360. And it, in this case, it is on the Z. All right, so there's 360. And then we'll apply our bend, just like before, 360. All right, and here's our new our new toroid saddle shape. All right, this is a pretty cool one actually. It has some nice, uh, uh, you know, nice curvature to it when it's finished. Um, now we'll go ahead and apply and edit poly, and let's just see where we're lined up here. Okay, so it's it's right there to the left or to the right. All right, so what we can do here is the same as before, or you could uh, just keep it, now that you know where you're lined up over here, you could just go to Edit Poly, select all of these, shift click Weld, and check your before and after, that's correct, so we're welded up over here. Alright, and now that we're welded, we could go ahead and collapse too, and apply a shell to thicken it, and then our turbo smooth and this is the result so it's a you know this is a pretty nice and in this case because we're so low res here we still have a lot of room we could uh, you know increase for an even smoother result without getting crazy with poly count you know and uh, there it is very cool shape that could be easily converted this one in particular could be easily converted into some kind of necklace pendant you know you could run some kind of uh, uh, string through one of these holes or something like that and that could be converted very simply to some kind of jewelry all right so um, that's how to achieve a, uh, a, a saddle ring shape um, without any kind of third-party plugins or anything and I mean these are very simple um, you know polygon modeling techniques that almost every 3d modeling package should have so this doesn't have to be uh, strictly a 3ds max tutorial so to speak you can follow along in in blender you can follow along in uh, you know silo or whatever else you guys use to model but uh, in this case it's 3ds max and that's how you get it so thank you for uh, watching and uh, I'll be back soon with another tutorial uh, let me know if this was helpful in any way and uh, if there's anything you'd like to see or you know you'd like to see done here that I didn't show or uh, you know was confusing or something let me know and uh, I'll try to clear it up for you all right enjoy thank you